Hello everyone, Crydax here. Welcome back to our Nullius playthrough. In our last episode, we boxed the bauxite, and we have boxed the limestone, and we are also going to box the iron and box the sandstone, and then we're going to start our boxed base. That's a lot of using the word box. We also got our chassis 3 set up, so we've got that going, and got a few more researches done slowly, slowly, because they cost so many science working our way towards the end of green science but we're almost there there's just a little bit left um i can get tanks or sorry trucks unlocked i can get the second tier of drone launcher apparently oh yeah and that's something we were going to do but it looks like these are the only green sciences we have left so one two three four five six seven eight nine nine more and then we're done Unless there's some that are not required for physics, but it, it kind of looks like they're all required. So, we do need personal transportation, braking, braking. Cybernetics here allows for leg augmentation, more character health, that doesn't really matter, and better uh, night vision. I'm not going to have room for that though. 3x5 in the equipment grid is pretty big. So that would take out like 15 squares. I could take out a hangar because I might not really need 32 robots because of how fast they move. That gets me 9 back, but then I still need 6 more back. I could lose a solar panel and two batteries. That might be worth it. I don't know. Um, all that to say, I feel like there was something else I was going to do. Oh, the drone launcher. Yes, let's check out the drone launcher. So I know we automated them somewhere as I was looking towards physics apparatus. Uh, I think it was up here. Yeah, there they are. Alright, so drone launcher looks a lot like artillery. And wow, there's a lot of different drones we can put in there. Um, so now we need the, what are they called? Scout drones. And then we need the, and I didn't put these in the chest, so I need to go find them. The control thingy. Which did I, yeah, I built them all the way down here. Oh, so we need the remote. Target's location on map. Okay, cool. So then here we load in the drones, which... There they are. And then we can do this. And then... No artillery. Does it have like a minimum range? Or do I have to target on the map? I have to target on the map view. Oh, there it goes. Boom. And then drone lands. And then it scouts. So, oh. <laughs> Ironically, I've already driven over pretty much every square inch of this, but I can explore the outer edges here. Oh, that's fun. It's actually really cool. Alright, let's see. Let's see what's out here. It's definitely a far easier way of exploring than what I did before. Still no more geothermal. Let's try there. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Let's try that corner, this corner. All these unexplored corners. This is really fun. Okay, that's going to bother me, but I need more ammo apparently. Anything? Ah, there it is. More geothermal. Okay, hold on. We need to automate this process. Requester. 
drone. Scout drone. This is sweet. I should have set this up before, before I drove around to two million places. You're faster than that. There it is. Nice deep bass sound. Kachunk. Very satisfying. Oh, that's a lot right there. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. That should get me a lot of power, if I were to fully saturate that. And then I want one more as far up here as I can get it. Maybe I can see more. Okay, so it looks like these are having the same issue. The construction zone is just outside. Okay, yeah, there's a decent amount, and there could be more that we can't see past the range there. Um, okay, so for this, our blueprints aren't quite perfect. So we actually need to build an extra RoboPort for every chunk of four. One, two, three. Okay, so that should get me some more there. And then over time, I can slowly build up what I need for Geothermal 2. And I might as well leave the old ones and just add new ones rather than replace the old ones. Um, so did I automate geothermal to or sterling to? I have automated heat pipe twos, so that's good. So we will switch our heat pipe request, which I can't find. Where is it? There it is, uh, to heat pipe two, which has a much higher heat capacity, 250 kilojoule per Celsius, and a higher max temp, of course. Um, heat pipe ones can now be ditched, and Sterling engine Quest, where is that? That can go to nothing. Sterling 2. Oh, and it's 90% efficiency, which is far better than 80%. And we'll say, well, 110 to go with, no, that's way too many. I'll just carry 40 around with me generally. Um, and I haven't even automated them yet, which is going to be very expensive. Compressed Argon. Search Compressor 2. I forget, do I have Compressed Argon? Don't. But I have it somewhere. Already. Yeah, right here. For the lamps. So let's set this up right here. The Sterling twos. That was a mistake. I just want to let them build up bigger. Um, and then I need surge compressor twos, which chances are I'm ready for. Except they probably don't go in a medium. Compressor. Oh, we need priority compressor twos first, which I don't think I have. Compressor. Yeah, I don't have those. So we need two large boys here. Request that. And then surge compressor to request that. That should be everything I need for Sterling 2s, which will build up to 100. Sweet. 
Oh, and what's the actual ratio? I'm assuming the ratio is still 1 to 10. Geothermal 2s make 30 megawatts. And Sterling Engine 2s consume... Wait a second, that's confusingly worded. Oh, so this tells you what it produces, not what it consumes. So it produces 800, but consumes one megawatt. So this means it's consuming 2.5 divided by 0.9, which is less nice of a number, I assume. Um, yep, definitely less nice of a number. So it consumes that. And we have 30 megawatts divided by that, so 10.8 is the new ratio. So that means you need 11 Sterling engines just to keep up with the geothermal production. And if you want surge capacity thrown in there, then, well, you want more than 11. So I'm thinking 14 per with a thermal tank thrown in. Maybe a couple thermal tanks. So it's just good to have all that automated um, so that over a long period of time it will catch up. And then the last thing we need is geothermal 2, which I believe we have everything for. Yes. And those stack to. I hate when you can't see the stack size. Um, they stack to 10, which is perfect. I don't I don't want more than that. And I still need to get that mod for one-time requests. But I don't think I want geothermals just constantly in my inventory. Because I'm only going to need them when I want to go out and place them. And honestly, sterling is the same way. Those don't need to be in my inventory. really all of this but i mean i have inventory space i think that's why i did it earlier it's just like it doesn't matter it's not going to cost me anything i'm not strapped for inventory space because everything is in the mall so that's nice all right well that's all finished beautiful we have volcanic ready when we need it so let's do some more boxing so I've already got limestone we need to keep the belt coming though um, limestone is gonna go with sandstone and bauxite's gonna go with iron that just makes sense to me because the metals go together so even though it feels weird I'm gonna put those on different different belts oh come on Okay, well, levitation field doesn't levitate you over rocks, I guess. We also should automate, before we get into this new base stuff, uh, belt threes. Let me do that real quick. Because that's a pretty big deal. And belt threes require no liquids. That's nice. So we can just throw those pretty much anywhere that we have room, which is, let's say, over here to the left. Okay, belt three, belt three, belt three, click, click, click. Go a little bit more on these two. We'll do two stacks of undergrounds and five stacks of regulars and call it a day. I'm gonna keep my requests for now because that's gonna take quite a while to build up. I do have everything, right? That this needs? Yeah, yeah, that should all work slowly over time okay one entity is missing really 
Pylon ones? We don't have any pylon ones. I'm out of steel beams. Well, that makes sense because I'm out of steel for everything. And that's going to take a while to catch up because I just automated a lot of buildings. Um, let's see. Did something go wrong here? I don't think so. These are all running still, right? Yep. So we'll just have to wait. Wait and see. With everything that I've automated, we should be fine. Over the long the long haul, which is what this is going to be, because setting up the boxed base stuff is not a short process. Okay, so we'll remove a few of the miners that are out, and then we'll add in the rest here. going I'll just combine those because that's still under 30 a second this oops this right here needs to be its own belt okay so that'll output priority right to my iron mines and then we'll have the boxing stuff which happens let's see i'll do three of them one there this one here Boxing recipe, iron ore. Okay. Just do that and then bring this down. And we wanted it to go on the bauxite one, I believe. So there we go. I guess because that's a one sided. Yeah, we'll just leave it. Redundancy doesn't cost you anything. Okay, so now all we need is sandstone, which is up here. And I should probably walk back within the boundaries of logistics to get more miners. Get rid of all this garbage. Make sure the research is still flowing. It is. Good deal. So, okay, heat pipes, thermal tanks. What are we looking at for geothermal? I have 10 plant twos and only 18 sterling twos. Okay, sterling twos need to build up a lot more before I want to go out and set those up. But each Sterling 2 makes 2.5 megawatts, so 20 Sterling 2s alone is already 50 megawatts, which is great. And with all the extra wind, that now averages out to like 300 and something megawatts, which is awesome. And so I'll just need to set up a bunch of Sterlings for surge capacity, honestly. So once I have maybe 40 sterling engines, which will give me 100 megawatts, I'll go set it up. And that only needs two geothermals. Okay, so we are running over to the sandstone. Which is up here. 
Setting up some more of this. Thirteen miners, that is a nice big patch of sandstone. I assume that is thirty more in a single row, is that true? Yeah, 31.2. Okay, so then... We probably want these to be three separate rows again. So that's the main row, and we need the boxing. And that is here. Maybe I'll set it up this way. Boxing sandstone. And each of these can do 30, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's that one, there's that one, and then this one needs to be up here. And we've got those can just go on the same. Ah! Really? Okay. We're just a few belts short, we can do this. There we go. I need to go get some more belts, apparently. Yeah, I only have 200 requested. What I really need to do is extend my logistics all the way out to here. doing on belt threes not good oh dear uh is this the steel problem yeah motor twos motor twos need steel actually that doesn't seem to be the issue with motor twos it just seems to be the rate well i can help a little bit But, uh, oh, I guess all the belt twos are getting consumed by this. Oh, we have all the splitters. That's what took a lot of the, a lot of the initial cost of everything. And now it's all got to catch up very slowly. Well, that's a bit of a bummer because I need lots of belts right now. So clearly I did not let that buffer enough, the red belts. Um... That being said, we almost have all our box stuff in one place, which is great. Let's bring down some logistics. Okay. We'll go to about there. Now I want to bring down sandstone. Oh, and then volcanic gas. I might actually get it from over here. Just a, a whole new source of it. And can you compress volcanic gas? Uh, doesn't look like it. 
So volcanic gas is the way it is. That's fine. We'll just need, I don't know, four or five of the Derek things, whatever they're called. should do it and then this will be the dawn of a new base spanning this whole region okay so we are gonna have to set up basically everything from scratch but that's okay that'll be fun um, you know like if I want iron ingots well, let's start with, I guess, iron ore ingredient, because that's how we're going to... Yeah, it doesn't look like we have boxed versions of the ore making. You can, you can box crushed iron ore, but then you can't do anything with it. So, hmm. I guess... We'll say an input of 60 iron ore. Does that feel crazy? Maybe I'll start with an input of 30 of each type of ore. No, we already have a 30 for iron, and that's not enough. So yeah, iron we want 60. And then when I get tier 3 buildings, we'll do even more. Yeah. And I believe at this stage, productivity modules is what we want. Beacons, um, amount affecting one building. I think four beacons is fine. Beacon by factory one, constant beacon zero. So essentially that's one row of beacons per building with speed one. Or no, speed two, I guess it is. Um, how many did that reduce it by? 22.5 down to... 13.7. And what if I could do 8 affecting 1? 9.87. That would be 2. So that's 5.3 megawatts versus 4.9 megawatts. So it's much more energy efficient to have one row of beacons per building. But if we alternate buildings, beacons, buildings, then we get the effect of this. Or we get the effect of this. One beacon per building, but eight affecting one, which is the best of both worlds. So we'll we'll make this fully efficient, as you would say. And then we're going to need a bunch of flotation cells. Now flotation cells are bigger, so the beacon the beacon math is a little different. Let's kind of imagine what that will be. And do they have to be spaced out? Is another big deal. Um, okay, so they don't have to be spaced out. These are four. So in terms of beacons, let me try to remember how the math works out. Um, I need power for this. Oh, and I need to put things in here for it to actually show. Okay. So, wait a second. Oh, they're just all affected by four still. That actually somehow works out perfectly. That doesn't feel right. There's no way that that should be right. Because... If they're size 4, then that shouldn't line up with size 3 at some point. 
No, I mean, these are all affecting three buildings, no matter what. Oh, interesting. So because the, the buildings are size four, and essentially the beacon height or width is nine squares, no matter how you look at nine, like where it starts in a group of four and where it ends, it's going to pass over two. Because even if it starts at the beginning, the ninth square gets a third one. And if it starts at the middle, then it'll just end in the middle of another one. And then if it starts at the very, very end, it'll, like the last square of this one, which is this guy, it'll still only get to the bottom square of this one. So weirdly enough, the beacons always affect three buildings. Which means there's exactly a perfect ratio because each beacon affects three buildings no matter where it's placed. And the ratio of beacons to buildings is four to three, then we get four effect sources. That's actually really interesting. I would not have guessed that. Um, it doesn't work that way with five um, because of the way like, like distilleries I think are size five. And size 5 buildings are going to work differently. But it's nice to know size 4 buildings actually still work with the 8 affecting 1, beacon by factory 1, 2, constant beacon 0. Constant beacon is for the beacons on the edge, so like you would type like 6 there. Um, and that would just account for the power on the ends of things. Uh, and then we probably won't, still want productivity here. and uh, speed 2. And we go from 19 down to 11.5. Nice. Okay, and then iron oxide goes into iron ingots. Now, there's not like a boxed version of that, right? No. So then I think iron ingots are where we want to box things. Iron ingot box, I think, yeah, we have boxed versions of all the other things. Okay. So, so then we want to box. Because iron ingots essentially can only be made into steel ingots, iron plates, or iron rods. And the box can be made into all those too. Oof. Okay, so medium furnaces, also productivity. Which gets me quite a bit more. 70 ingots per 60 ore. That's a pretty good ratio. Um, and then... Gotta set the beacon defaults for everything somehow. 1, enter, 0, enter, record. Beacon 2, record. And then speed 2. Which helps a lot. Uh, we actually need 8 affecting 1 for these. That's a big, big difference. Um, it's still one by factory, though. I don't know how these keep getting off. That's going to be eight. That's going to be one. Technically, it's less than one for this, but I don't care about the total nuance of it. It doesn't need to be perfect. It'll at least be ballpark accurate. All right, there we go. And we actually get quite a bit of lime out because we have limestone in. So that will just prioritize that. You know, that'll be in an active provider. And so we'll gravel. And then carbon dioxide. It's free. It's free real estate. Um, so we will compress the carbon dioxide. I'm just... I'm going to compress all gases and use a priority venting system. Compress and barrel all gases. Unless they're worthless gases. Worthless gases would include... Um, well, nitrogen's not worthless. But I just am going to have way too much of it. So I may, I may do the, like, I'll compress it and barrel it, but only if I need it, and then I'll vent it otherwise. And I'll probably set dioxide up the same way. And probably um, oxygen. What am I looking for? What? Oh, the the barreling recipe. 
there. Okay, so we're outputting compressed dioxide barrels, boxes of iron ingots, boxing gravel, boxing lime, and boxing stone. Although stone may not want to be boxed. Let's take a look at that real quick. So stone... Hmm... Stone goes into stone brick, gravel, basic undergrounds, burner ore crushers, rails, and furnaces. Stone boxed. Oops. That's not what I meant. Um, stone boxed goes into gravel and bricks only. So we will need unboxed stone for the basic buildings. This is where boxing, unboxing gets annoying. Because essentially we need to provide boxed stone and unboxed stone. Both. So I'll just have some sort of setup. How do I want to do this? I feel like it's mostly buildings that require unboxed things. So I actually will request boxed stone and I can't do a higher priority of requesting, unfortunately. So as long as I have enough, it's not gonna matter, but I'll request boxed stone and then I'll unbox it and provide that. And so that'll just be like the basic way that I do this. And then I have sludge, which needs to go away. And how much do I care about sludge? Do I want to set things up in a way where I keep all of it in barrels and move it all around in barrels? I am going to need it for worms later and fertilizer later. So I think just I want to do this right. We're going to barrel it, get rid of the barrels, and then I will have another section of the base that just gets rid of all my sludge. So there we go. This is it. One block for iron. Sweet. Okay. So we're going to need to build that. Bit by bit. Um, am I in range of logistics? I think I want to be in range of logistics for this. And we'll just start out here in the open space and start building. Uh, what am I doing? Pin it. There we go. Uh, I'm going to need way more than 10 beacons. What do they stack to again? 50? Okay. So we're going to want more like 30 on hand. And I have the inventory space. So let's up our modules as well. Because we're going to need more of those in general. All right. So step one is 10 crushers. And then beacons. And then we need nine flotation cells. And then beacons. I should probably just copy paste that. And I'm going to need the module inserter. Um, this is kind of like an upgrade planner. 
but you can set like what buildings get what modules and stuff like that. So we'll we'll use this and then we'll have to I wish you could like load a hell mod um thing that would somehow well, but if you have the same building twice, how would it know which ones get which ones? But anyway, uh, and then we're going to need 30 furnaces, which is probably going to be two rows. That's 15. And we're going to copy that. And then copy that. This is going to take a while, this process. Oh, no. Shoot. Um, like, my base isn't going to be able to keep up with the, the module demands and the building demands. So many buildings here. Just for now, I need some power. We'll figure out how to get power to everything later. I'm still missing that one pylon. That's bad news. That means my steel is uh, still not happening. And I don't really have a better way. I mean, I guess I could put productivities on the steel output, or the iron outputs, change them all to furnace twos, it's actually not a bad idea. I forgot those were still Furnace 1s. Because if we change them to Furnace 2s, then they'll go faster and that will neglect or negate the speed downside of whatchamacallit? Field module 2s. It will use a lot more power, but we've gotten a lot more power recently. So. Oh, I need some connection here. We are convex, which is a problem. How are we doing? Only six, seven hundred are getting used, so that's not bad. Uh, but yeah, let's improve my iron production just a little bit, which will help. What is that? 10%? Yeah, 10% more iron could be a big deal. And then now this will consume 18.667, so we actually need to upgrade these belts to red. Because that will consume more than a yellow belt's worth. And it will produce probably more than a yellow belt's worth. Yeah, 20 per second of stuff. So that needs to be on a red belt and a red splitter. So that'll help. And we want to prioritize that to the left, which it already is. Perfect. And then do a little more. How much are we making? At most, 26. This is using 18. Is there room for beacons right here? Heck yes, there is. Uh, I may not need the second section. Because that can now consume 22.7. And I can put a few more here. And then some on this side. And what do we got? Consuming 26. 
close. How about now? 27. Oh, and I can fit one more up here. I'll let the bots bring those old inserters, but... 28.8, there we go, that should do it. We're just gonna cut off that section. And it'll figure itself out. Now the graphite input should still be okay. And yeah, this will just be much more efficient. Cost more power, I'm sure. But not enough to even significantly change the way that looks. Oh, are the inserters enough now? Do we need to upgrade all these? 1.429. Yeah, that's an input rate that these can't handle. They can only handle one per second. So we do need the purple inserter upgrader, and I don't want to make all these blue because there's no need. So that'll take a minute. But it'll get there. Okay. And then this stuff is all done forever. So we can deconstruct it. Alt D. All of this goes away. Just make sure things stay connected and powered. Put a few substations. Bada bing, bada boom. I probably should upgrade all the hangers in the base. Let's do that. Great planner. Hangar one. To hangar two. And. 46. That's not the worst thing in the world. That'll happen over time. Okay, sweet. So that is at least something that will help as I build the rest of everything. Because right now we're just so short on steel. Probably because of all the things I'm building. Is it worth revamping the steel recipe over here as well? So if I add lime, I get how much more? So five to two is pretty bad. 11 to six, is that that much better? Six. I don't know why, but when it's smaller, I feel like that's so much more difficult. Five to two, or wait, two fifths versus six elevenths. Uh, yeah, it goes from 0.4 to 0.54, which is 10%, 20%, 35% more steel. That is pretty significant. And we even, I mean, we're kind of just turning lime back into crushed limestone, which is kind of weird which is what you need to turn into lime in the first place. So it's not like you're losing all of the all of the lime. You're just kind of undoing a process. But and what about the speed? 25 to 6 and 12 to 2. So 6 per this is like 4 per. So it's also faster. Do I have enough lime? L, control F, lime. I have lots of lime. LOL. Uh, let's do it. This is going to get me a lot more steel. And I think I'm still a long ways from my base running smoothly um, in the boxed side of things. So I don't really want to ignore all possible improvements on this side of things. Oh, crap. It's not made in foundries, though. What is it made in? Oh, just furnaces. Okay. That's fine. Should be an easy fix. 
Furnaces. Oh, you can't do it that way. Um, okay, remove all that. Steel two. Yield to oxygen. And what do we got? Far less than a belt's worth, so let's throw some more beacons in here. That's better. Okay. Total output is not a whole lot, but we will alternate, I guess. Sides of the belt, just because we can. Input, 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 input. Substation. That should do it. Oh crap, except I've got limestone now. Output party left. Crushed limestone. That needs to be actively provided. That needs to be fast. Not that it really matters, because we don't have all that much steel, but... Okay, and we'll prioritize to the left there. Prioritize that to the right. So iron always goes to iron first, but then it goes to this steel, which can use up to 8.8 .8 of it. Is that helpful? Let's clear filters. So we've been maintaining right around 350-ish. And it looks like our new rate is 460-ish. That's a big boost. That is a big boost. And we can go faster. I don't know what this is for. It looks like gravel, but we can move that belt up. And get some more beacons up here. So we go from an output of 5.3 to 7.2. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So that'll really up the steel game. Hopefully enough to fix those issues. Probably not enough to fix those issues, but it's something. All right, well, that's been a good time. Let's get some more of these guys to make a non-convex shape. Okay. Are we ready to hook things up? Oh, also I switched, this was another thing I did in between episodes, I'm just now remembering, I switched all my tanks to tank threes. So now I have large tank, well, technically large tank two, but it's the third tier of science tank. Uh, and then medium tank three, small tank two. So now we can store tons of compressed fluids, which is gonna be crazy. Even a small tank full of compressed fluids is 80,000 of the original fluid, which is pretty cool. All right, so this build is iron. We got those three steps done. And then the rest of the steps are all dealing with output stuff. And wasn't there input stuff I've completely ignored? Yes, there is. So... I've ignored the input. That's part of the problem here. So, <sighs> so crushed limestone. We already have boxes of regular limestone. What am I doing? No, I gotta click it up here. 
So we will get this from unboxing. And I'm just going to request those via bot. Um, and then graphite, same thing. I'm going to have a huge graphite plant. Request that boxed. Then caustic solution. We're going to get that from barrel emptying. And we'll be requesting a lot of barrels of caustic. So there's my inputs figured out. But I need to build each of those. And barreling pump twos, I believe, are unlocked soon. No, they're not unlocked until physics apparatus. Shoot. So I'm stuck with barreling pump ones for now. Which I need two of those for caustic. Yeah, okay. So let's set that stuff up. Well, let's let's get the belts running first. Okay, so input belts of iron. We have 60. I do think I'll do this. And that way I can still put um, later on. Is that right? Uh, this is not right. This says it can only consume 26. Do I? Oh, the beacons don't have speed in them yet. That's what's going on here. Okay. Let's fix that. Okay, and then I assume the other row of beacons would get them all the way to 60. Probably the simplest is just if each of these can take from either belt. It's a little wasteful, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna matter. So then that produces an unfortunate amount of output. We're actually gonna need blue belts for that. Because that's more than 60 items per second. But we'll have each of these. <sighs> Again, if anyone knows of a mod that prevents inserters from taking things out of beacons i would happily download that as well because that is in my mind one of the most annoying things that exists in factorio and i again with the exception of some crazy circuit type stuff where you like want to switch what modules are in a beacon based on a circuit condition i cannot think of one use case for that not one so i it feels like the kind of thing that mods should exist to enable, not mods should have to exist to disable. So it is one of those strange... Actually, wait, I need to do this differently. I want one to be left, one to be right, one to be left, one to be right. Okay. And then that will be consistent in every pair of two. There we go. Okay, and then I think I'm just gonna leave a full like red underground belts of space for if I wanna expand later, I can at least fit a few more. Uh, Cause once I have blue belts, I'll have the ability to do more capacity. So then each of these needs to have a stone split off. And then stone will get boxed. Here, what was the total output? Uh, 8.1 per second. 
Move that up so it's even faster. Stone boxing. Active provider. Perfect. Okay, so stone has been gotten rid of. And then we have up to 56.7 crushed. So first we'll get these all underground connected. And then we're going to have to figure out how to get two belts of crushed iron past here. Feels tricky. No, that should work. Because then each one can just do this and this. And then that's a pair of two. Now the outputs of that are just 51.03. So then we will need a similar. I don't know why I went up over there, but now I've kind of committed to the going up on my outputs. Shtick. So I guess that's fine. Um, I mean, can I just do this and it'll work? Because we need to put left. What did I do over here? Let's be consistent. Okay, up, right. Down, left. Down. Left. So then that should just work. And there's only one solid output, so that's easy enough. So we've got all that, and cool enough, I can fit a substation in there. Now the problem is these require three physical inputs and have three physical outputs and a fluid output, which is extra tricky, especially because the rates are far more than half a belt actually it's pretty perfect these can both be half a half a belt and i have two columns so i need to imagine these are all split in half that's right so the iron oxide can just be on one belt and the other stuff can be on half a belt each because it's really only about 26 and 8 each 26 can all go on that belt, 8 each can go on that belt. But then the outputs, we need 35. Yep, that's going to be a problem. Because half of this is still more than a whole belt. And I have the, not to mention the fluid um, pipes are going to get in the way of that at some point. I mean, even if I have this, well, let's just think about total items, I guess. That's, no, we'll be fine. We just need a filter on the output. Because total items, we get 85, 80, I'll round up, uh, 87, 95. Cut in half is 47.5, which fits on two belts. So I just, yeah, we'll be fine. All that to say. So down, left, up, right. And then we've got these coming in. Oops, I wanted that. Okay. So that'll work. And then copy that all the way up. 
Although I should start this at the top in case there's an odd number. I think there was 13, wasn't there? Yeah. This is crazy talk. Um, I wonder what's happening with belts. Okay, we have plenty of straight red belts. Where are the underground red belts? Right here. I actually don't have underground tier two pipes. Oh, okay. I'm out of regular tier 2 pipes. I wonder why. What uses so many... pipes? Is it just all the pipes and belts I've been creating, maybe? I don't know. Okay, but I really want to finish this build, so let's just continue in the, uh, in the realm of blueprint mode and trust that our bots will catch up with everything eventually. Now I'm sad because... Oh, it did let me flip it. I was worried it wouldn't. Okay, so I'll just do that. Okay. There it is. It's beautiful. Um... So outputs are all here. We're going to need to do some serious filtering. Because there's more than a solid belt of iron, we actually need a filter like this for iron ingots to be on two belts. Because the total output is two and a half belts of iron, roughly. So these are going to be four equal belts of iron. And then everything else. So we'll have the everything else go out. This way. Now, does the everything else fit on one belt? It does. And that is gravel and lime, and we just need to box both of those. Oh, but I wanted to leave a whole underground distance before I do that. Okay. So then up here, we've got um, probably two boxing... One for the lime. It is lime, right? Yeah, lime boxing. And then two for gravel boxing. And we decided all this fits on one belt. So that should do it. And in this case, We can just put it all into the same active provider. Okay, so that should do it. I think we haven't connected up the inputs and outputs and stuff, but oof, this is it's gonna be a long process, but this is gonna be the base that like beats the game. This was just the base that got us to where we are now, <laughs> which is crazy, you know, but I, I want to do this last part right. I may end up getting lazy at some point. It'll go fast once we start building the mall stuff, because I can just add more of each building when I start running low on a certain thing, because I'll just have a consistent design. Like, I'm going to do just a massive column of large assemblers with no recipes in them, and I'll just set recipes as I need more of something. 
and I'll do a massive column of well, the liquid stuff is a little harder because you need an unbarreler and barreler, and so you usually want to have those together. But I'll do a bunch of massive sections of like flotation cells and distilleries. and So it'll be easy because um, I'll have a different column for each type of building. And so I'll just be able to like be like, okay, well, I need a bunch of distilleries. I'll just put 10 right here, or I need a bunch of flotation cells. I'll put 10 right here. And then do stuff like that. So that's the long-term plan, but... I think I'm going to need to call it an episode here. Um, I will be streaming some more later today for those of you that are here on Twitch. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, I think I'm going to call it quits on this video and on streaming. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you all next time.